Uh, <clears throat> Alright guys, it is actually a lovely fall evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be, it is a Friday night, October 21st. 2022, I believe, so uh, being Friday, you know what that means. It is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. Go over here to mongabay.com to see what's on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com. And uh, so anyway, you folks who have been complaining about my new short video format, don't worry. Uh, there will be no snippet. This will be a full-fledged rant. Good Lord, does uh, Rhett have a lot of doom and gloom on his mind between the apocalyptimism. I just... Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to start on the bottom of the ocean the bottom of the shallow ocean in this case, I guess, with all of this talk about deep sea mining. How about shallow water mining is not, is not the eco alternative to deep sea mining. Yes. Mining in the shallow waters off the continental shelf is seen as more sustainable than deep sea mining but goes against global goals on sustainability and conservation. Do you think so? There are already shallow mining projects underway in Namibia and Indonesia. Others in Mexico, New Zealand, and Sweden have been proposed. But, as with deep sea mining, yes, Shallow water mining also can have drastic effects on marine biodiversity because it, like deep sea mining, huh, requires dredging up the seafloor to extract the minerals found there. Do you think so? Uh, shallow. <laughs> Oh, God, shallow sea mining is not an eco-alternative to deep sea mining. Thank you for explaining that. And, guys, I'm, uh, I, I mean, this is a full docket. I'm, I'm going to just touch on a few of these, uh, but you can find the rest on mongabay.com. But do you have itchy ears or what? Do you have itchy ears? Okay, here's a story about hydroelectric dams in Europe, which you don't hear about much. Uh, a proposal to dam one of the last free-flowing rivers left in Europe was halted. Yes. Uh, Good for them. You know, it's everywhere. Anyway, okay, here is a real, here is a real shocker for those of you, <laughs> you, you know, uh, you still eat beef. This is the reason I no longer eat beef. Beef is still coming from protected areas in the Amazon. Study shows, no, the fact is beef is not coming Let's cut the crap. There's several stories similar to this. This is one looking at cattle ranching inside protected areas in Brazil. Okay, if you're cattle ranching, if you're gold mining, if you're building a highway, whatever, it's not a protected area. It's an unprotected area, okay? It is not a protected area. You do not raise cattle in a protected area. It becomes an unprotected area. Let's call a spade a spade. The, 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 the very notion of protected areas, it, it, it is a joke. Throw it out the damn rapidly closing window while you still can. Protected areas, my ass. 
beef is still coming from unprotected areas in the Amazon, yes. According to a new study, 1.1 million cattle were bought directly from you know what I, you would be led to believe is a protected area in, in the Brazilian Amazon. Yeah, protected area in the Brazilian Amazon. That's like a, a, a chipmunk protected area at Bugs in a Jar Farm. What do you think, Sancho? About protected areas for chipmunks. And 2.2 million cattle spent at least a portion of their lives grazing in protected areas. Yes. Uh, DD, around 70%, 70% of deforestation in the Amazon has been linked to cattle ranching. Meat producers have made commitments, yes, to stop sourcing from illegally deforested lands. But a lack of information about where the cattle are grazing has allowed many corporations to escape accountability. Do you think so? Oh, anyway, here we go. How about a proposal to grant the ocean rights? Okay, we're going to... Uh, <laughs> Yes, okay, moving on, granting the ocean rights, yeah, the, the right to be shallow mined or deep sea mined, the right to be overfished, the right to be treated as a open sewer for the rest of the planet. Okay, as Brazil starts repaving an Amazon highway, Land grabbers, get to work! Paving work has begun on a stretch of highway running through one of the remotest and best preserved parts of the Brazilian Amazon. Huh, even as questions about the project's permits abound. As BR319 was built in the 1970s, uh, and I, it was a story in Life magazine about BR319. I was 12 years old, which I chalk up to the beginnings of me turning into a doomer. I really understood in, in uh, 1972, how doomed we are reading an article in Life magazine about this very highway. But, um, so anyway, so they're going to upgrade that highway. Uh, con conservation experts have long warned against repaving the middle stretch, warning that improved access to this carbon-rich region will lead to a surge in deforestation, burning, and land grabbing. Uh, this is the purpose, this is the reason why they are doing it. They would not be uh, going in there, you, you know, and making this highway, I guess some sort of super highway, uh, that is the, re the reason they're doing it, is to lead to a surge in deforestation, burning, and land grabbing. That's why you upgrade highways. Okay. With the repaving already underway, Yes, uh, this is already happening, meaning a surge in deforestation, burning, and land grabbing is already happening, huh? Raising concerns about unchecked forest loss that would have massive ramifications for the global climate. 
Okay, so what is uh, Rhett doing on YouTube this week? So over there on their YouTube channel, they have a video about this damn planet-eating tourist train in, uh, in Mexico. Good God, you can go on here and see pictures of this damn thing. Uh, okay. For the uh, worse than previously thought headline of the week. Okay, what is the worse than previously thought this week? How about plastic pollution? And <laughs> there you go, worse than previously thought. Plastic impacts a grossly underestimated one to punch for seabirds. That plastic pollution is harmful to marine life, including seabirds, is well known, but recent research finds that the impacts of plastic pollution may be grossly underestimated and that plastics can affect multiple uh, organs. A uh, new study found uh, that initial consumption can harm the stomach, but new evidence also showed that impacts are far more expansive and may cause ongoing health problems distributed throughout body organs. Yes, good Lord. Plastic pollution is a massive growing problem for the world's oceans and marine life. Yes, earlier this year, researchers announced that the global planetary boundary for novel entities, novel entities including plastics, has been passed. Hmm, threatening Earth's operating systems and life as we know it. There you go. Okay. Here we go. We're going to save the... I'm not even getting into it. There is... Uh, I guess new boss, same as the old boss in Colombia. All right, you will not believe this, but habitat loss and climate change threaten Bangladesh's native freshwater fishes with extinction. I never would have thought that if it wasn't for this story. There were, at one time, more than 300 native freshwater fish species in Bangladesh, but many have disappeared, while others are on the verge of extinction due to habitat loss, overfishing, pollution, and climate change. Yes, rivers and other bodies of water in Bangladesh are dwindling fast due to development, unplanned urbanization, encroachment, and siltation. Yes. Oh, do you think so? Here's a story about malaria and orangutans. Good Lord, it never stops. Uh, well, I guess this is... Uh, all right, who would believe this? This is, uh, you know, one of these protected, another protected land story. Would you believe that an illegal agricultural project moves ahead on Brazilian indigenous lands. Hmm. The very essence of the project, the very essence of the project makes it unconstitutional 
because according to the Brazilian constitution, the indigenous peoples enjoy the exclusive use of their territories with the sole right to the exploitation of the natural resources contained therein. Yes. I'm not going to get off on a noble savage rant. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, a story about fish farming. You know, I, fish farming, a major uh, tenet of the United Nations sustainability goals. You know, talking about aquaculture, otherwise known as fish farming. You know, how we're going to sustainably feed a planet of 8 billion people by growing more fish out in the ocean. But there's one problem. What do you think they feed the fish in the fish farms? They feed the, whatever you call those, domestically raised fish they feed them wild fish, and now uh, the, the, the wild fish food is getting hard to find, so they're moving to Antarctic krill. Fish feed industry turns to krill with unknown effects on the Antarctic ecosystem, you know, one of the building blocks of the food chain. The Antarctic krill fishing industry has been growing in the past two decades. The global growth of fish farming is now driving the demand for Antarctic krill as an alternative to wild fish in fish feeds amid the depletion of many wild fish stocks. Yes. The krill industry is expanding its fleet and planning to significantly increase catches in the next few years. So uh, we can all, we can feed 8 billion people sustainably on one of the main building blocks of the global food chain. Yes. Uh, this story, guys, I, I, I don't know. This is one of the strangest stories that I might have ever found in Manga Bay. Local coverage of Nepal's Himalayan Viagra harvest lacks eco-focus. Do you think so? Yarsa Gunbu, Yarsa Gunbu, better known outside Nepal as the Himalayan Viagra, accounts for 40%, 40% of the uh, of Nepal's non-timber exports. Every year, hundreds of thousands of Nepalis head for the hills to harvest this fungus mummified caterpillar from the wild, leaving schools, farms, and entire villages deserted. Good Lord, thanks to the exorbitant prices that the commodity can fetch, Himalayan Viagra by eating fungus mummified caterpillars to get your tallywhacker hard. Ha! Huh. Yes. I I anyway, I think we've heard enough about the Himalayan Viagra. Uh, wow! You will not believe this. Southern Philippine Coal Project moves ahead despite community opposition. Heavy machinery has begun operating at a coal mine on the southern Philippine island of Mindanao. Yes. 
the Planet Eaters at San Miguel Corporation estimate the mine will produce 180 million, 180 million metric tons of coal and plans to build a power plant. The project has been opposed by environmental activists, the Catholic Church, and some tribal groups who say it threatens the environment, food, and water security. Uh, do you think so? Okay, this is, you know, I mentioned this last week. So Manga Bay is starting this new sub-Saharan African, you know, quick roundup. So here's a few short stories coming out of sub-Saharan Africa. An environmental impact study warns that a planned highway between the Senegal cities of Dakar and St. Louis would lead to nearly 400,000 trees being cut down in two forest reserves, otherwise known as unprotected areas, along the route. Okay, let's go over to Zambia, where a new study shows that households in Zambia are heavy, heavily reliant on forest foods, which leaves them vulnerable to food insecurity as forest loss increases. Do you think so? Anyway, moving on. Uh, okay, for anybody who does not understand the knock-on effects of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, a fast-growing pipeline, the Amazon to Southeast Asia wildlife trade, the legal and illegal wildlife trade continues to escalate in tandem with increasing Chinese investment in South America's Amazon region, mirroring a similar Chinese trafficking trend that has already devastated elephants, rhinos, and pangolins in Africa. Hundreds of Amazon species are being shipped to Asia, principally to China, in unsustainable numbers, ranging from jaguars to reptiles, turtles and parrots, to songbirds, poison dart frogs, and tropical fish. The damage to the Amazon could be profound, researchers say. These species are sought out as ingredients in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, used in the fashion industry and sold as live pets. Uh, the online commerce is booming too. So, you know, we need to cut the crap uh, about this traditional Chinese medicine, okay? How can any species from the Amazon rainforest in South America have anything to do with traditional Chinese medicine? That is unadulterated horseshit on the face of it. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? Traditional Chinese medicine did not include species that did not traditionally live in China. In order to be used in traditional Chinese medicine, you have to traditionally live in China, but China has already killed all of their traditional medicine animals in their own country. So now they're just raping and pillaging the rest of the world uh, and calling it traditional Chinese medicine, which is unadulterated horseshit on the face of it. Okay. 
But speaking of unadulterated horseshit on the face of it, I, 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 if I could reach through and, and slap Rhett Butler right now, I would do it. Th this story r right here, just buried in the middle uh, of, of this rant, I don't know what the hell Rhett Butler, what kind of hopium he is smoking for, for uh, spouting this bullshit. Here we go. You heard it here in Manga Bay. Manga Bay and Rhett Butler have spent, what is it now, 12 years talking about how palm oil uh, has completely destroyed uh, the, the southeast rainforest. Uh, and, and, and now Rhett Butler is getting ready to undo 12 years of hard work spewing this unadulterated horseshit that I don't know where my bullshit button is, but if I, if I had one in front of me, I would be hitting it with a sledgehammer. Sustainability pledges help Indonesia produce palm oil with less deforestation. Deforestation that is associated with palm oil has fallen by 82% over the past decade. In, in Indonesia, the world's top producer of the commodity, according to a new analysis by the Indonesian Palm Oil Bureau. I mean, I honestly don't know if, 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 if that, uh, who the new analysis is. Uh, this is despite a rise in palm oil prices, huh? which historically has been associated with a rise in deforestation as land is cleared for new plantings. Yes, researchers, researchers attribute the continued decline in palm oil deforestation to the, uh, to the rising adoption of unadulterated horseshit, greenwashing, zero deforestation commitments. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, guys, I have to find out who the hell, uh, who, who the hell uh, this study comes from. Uh, the analysis by Palm Oil Supply Chain Mapping Initiative Trace has found. Uh, okay, so who the hell is Trace? What is Trace? Alright, anyway guys, I don't have time to get into this uh, unadulterated horseshit, period, pure and simple. Uh, I am embarrassed uh, for Rhett Butler and Manga Bay for, uh, for this. This is truly uh, insulting to my, in in to my intelligence and I assume yours. Uh, there we go. As climate risks intensify in Brazil, election rivals offer few solutions. Yes, as the country prepares to elect a president at the end of this month, neither candidate has offered any concrete proposals for the prevention and management of climate disaster risks. Do you think so? Okay, here we go. Guess right to it. <clears throat> go to Bolivia. The protected area, the protected area that isn't. This is Bolivia's Nembi Guasu beset by fires, farms, and roads. The Nembi Guasu area of, of conservation and ecological importance is the second largest 
now non-protected area in southern Bolivia's Gran Chaca region. Yes, despite gaining official recognition as a protected area just three years ago, dozens of rural settlements have appeared in Nembi Guasu over the past three years. Hmm. Research indicates these settlements contributed to severe forest fires in 2019 and 21. Uh, satellite data and imagery sh show roads and clearings proliferating uh, over the past several years. Meanwhile, officials are planning for yet another road that would transect the, the protected area aimed at connecting agricultural producers in Bolivia in Paraguay. There you go. Here's a story about dog shooting. Dog shooting. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm just, good Lord, this goes uh, on and on. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here because I'm already on to a full rant. Let's wrap it up in South Africa where we see poaching surges in the birthplace of white rhino conservation. Poaching has more than doubled this year in South Africa's I can't even begin to pronounce the name of this national park, the birthplace of white rhino conservation. Conservationists say poaching syndicates have turned their attention to this and other parts of the province because rhino numbers in Kruger National Park, the previous epicenter of rhino poaching, have been drastically reduced and I love this sentence, and private reserves around Kruger are dehorning their animals. So the poachers don't have any reason to kill the animals because the rhino reserves are just cutting their horns off. So let's see, if poachers are not poaching the rhinos where the rhino managers are cutting off the rhino horns. This is a real, real brain teaser here, guys. Yes. Humble uh, is a very challenging game reserve for anti poaching patrols to defend. Yes. Do you think so? Unless more is done to tackle the wider issue of the illegal wildlife trade, the future looks bleak for the rhinos. Uh, unless more is done, but well, why don't we start with cutting off the rhino horns? I know this is real rhino rocket science. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up because I know that I am talking to myself as we will see. Uh, see if we head back to the shorter version tomorrow or not. I don't know, still playing around with all of that. Bye guys. Yes, little log. Did you survive that full length rant?